Nuketown is one of the most iconic multiplayer maps in Call of Duty history, first appearing in Call of Duty Black Ops, which released in 2010, and becoming a staple of the franchise. The map has evolved across several installments, becoming a fan favorite due to its fast-paced action and close-quarter combat, and so today we're going to look at a brief history of Nuketown. Now, once again, Nuketown was first introduced in the original Black Ops as a small, tight-knit map designed to look like a 1950s American suburb used for nuclear testing. Inspired by real-world nuclear test sites, the map was modeled after suburban communities that were used in nuclear bomb tests to study the impact on buildings and dummies. The map consists of two houses at each end, separated by a central street with a vehicle and a playground. Its simplicity, combined with fast-paced action, made it an instant fan favorite. It also featured an Easter egg where, after completing certain tasks, the mannequin scattered around the map would transform in various ways. Now let's dig a little deeper into the primary inspiration behind Nuketown. Now during the 50s, the United States had many nuclear test sites where mock towns were built to test the effects of atomic bombs on structures and human-like figures. These were known as doom towns, and these towns were designed to replicate typical American suburban neighborhoods, complete with fully furnished houses, vehicles, and mannequins dressed in period attire. These tests helped assess the potential damage that nuclear explosions could cause to civilian infrastructure. In Nuketown, the layout of the map mimics these suburban neighborhoods, and the developers were going to say that they desired to create a fast-paced chaotic map. Treyarch wanted to design a map that encouraged quick engagements and constant action. The small size of Nuketown combined with its balanced layout ensured that players were always in the thick of battle, which contributed to its lasting popularity. And we can see its influence in today's maps like Shipment in Modern Warfare 3, which some have argued that it has done more harm than good. Now, in 2012, Black Ops 2 would be released and Nuketown would return under the name Nuketown 2025. This iteration was set in a futuristic version of the original map with more modern aesthetics but the same layout. The map retained the essence of close quarter combat and the post apocalyptic theme was tied to the game's future timeline. In 2015, with Call of Duty Black Ops 3, the map was reimagined once again as Nuke Town, but you replace the E with a 3. Very creative. Now, this map was set in a dystopian, highly futuristic environment. The map still retained the core layout of the original, but the aesthetics were even more futuristic, incorporating elements of cyber warfare and advanced technologies seen in the game. The map added more verticality to accommodate the new movement system in Black Ops 3, such as wall running and boost jumping. Haters gonna hate. One four inbound. Like a freight train. Two kills. One freight over. Drop them. For Call of Duty Black Ops 4 in 2018, Nuketown was brought back once again, but with a fresh twist, set in Cold War era Soviet nuclear test site. This version of Nuketown shifted the aesthetics to a more Russian winter setting, complete with snow and propaganda imagery. Despite the visual overhaul, the core map layout remained familiar, maintaining the fast action and chaotic gameplay. Enemy lightning strike inbound. And for 2020's Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War, Nuketown returned once again, and it was brought back as Nuketown 84. This time as a throwback to the 1980s, the aesthetics of the map changed to reflect a grungy, rundown version of the suburban test site, with graffiti, rusted cars, and a generally decayed look. This version still kept the traditional close quarter layout and remained largely faithful to the original map design. Now, Nuketown became one of the most famous multiplayer maps in Call of Duty history due to its simple, symmetrical design, which results in fast-paced, chaotic gameplay. The map size makes it ideal for close quarter combat, and it's frequently chosen in various game modes like Team Deathmatch, Domination, and others. Over the years, Nuketown has also featured various Easter eggs, most famously involving the mannequins scattered 
around the map. Nuketown's recurring presence in the Black Ops series has solidified itself as a fan favorite and one of the most beloved maps in Call of Duty history, perhaps the most beloved, and we can expect another variation of Nuketown in Call of Duty 6. And so the history and the legacy of Nuketown will continue to expand and continue to grow probably as long as Call of Duty Black Ops is alive. Mm -hmm.